Hello and welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're doing a day in the life in our Irish suckler farm. So basically it's just what jobs and what happens on our farm day to day, um, like feeding cattle and all that. But there's also jobs in this video that I'll just throw in that, are, that won't be done, that are like weekly jobs or monthly jobs. But uh, as it happens, as I'm recording this video, uh, they've crept up on us. So uh, they have to be done. So I'll just throw them into this video to, to spice things up as well. And uh, before we get into the video, if you're watching this video and you're not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of every uh, future videos. And I'll... Uh, well, that's not the outro, but uh, we'll get into the video.
Alright, that's them fed. I have to obviously throw silage to them. And um, obviously, I don't know if you've seen it in the video, but there's a bar sticking out here. That's because this gate here, at the far end, it's uh, it's not the best. It's breaking away. It's getting weak. So uh, we came down one day and the gate was starting to lean. And if we didn't do anything, it would have fell. So uh, for a temporary measure, we put a bar up here the whole way across to keep it up. And there's another bar just there to keep it up as well over there until uh, we can get these cows out and then we can do a permanent sort of job on it, weld it and fix it. So you have a pole sticking out here. You have the blue barrel for water for these here. So you have two sort of obstacle courses in your way. And uh, so I have to split the bale sort of this side, further up, further more up, between the, between the pole and uh, the blue barrel for the water. And uh, I'll throw you some silage in a minute. And the reason I didn't shove this bit back to them is because they will have most of that at in, I don't know when, a couple of hours. So I'll just keep that in front of uh, these ones here. They tend to not eat as much as the cows. Because if you put that lump in front of them, they'll just keep uh, eating it and eating it and eating it. And then eventually there'll be nothing there but you'll still have the mounds of silage in front of them. So um, we're trying to save bales as well, but uh, it's not even a long grape. It's basically right beside them. So we'll just uh, grape that silage to them and uh, just give them enough, um, you know, sort of sustainable silage feeding, if you wish. Another thing I want to point out, you may have seen me sort of jerking the tractor, sort of revving it, uh, giving it high revs, and lifting the clutch up fast and sort of jerking up. That's because the back end of the bale splitter isn't all that sharp and it's not uh, cutting the, the back end of the bale properly and it's still sort of connected up. So if I just drove out slowly, I would have driven out the whole bale, dragged, I would have drug out the whole bale again with me. So the reason I jerked it was just to, was just to break the connection with it. We we'll take this one for example, I don't know where I split it, but say I split the bale this way, the back end of the bale splitter here, it's not cutting it right, so you'd still have a section of silage connected to the one beside it. And if I drove out slowly, I'd drive those, I'd be dragging those two bales out. So when I jerked it, it was breaking the, the connected silage. Um, breaking that away from it. So I'm only bringing out the section of silage that I want to bring out and not the section of silage being dragged out with it as well, if you know what I mean. But anyways, I'll uh, plant the camera down and I'll throw the silage.
Okay, that's them fed. Um, that needs to be filled, take all the silage out. But uh, that's all them fed. We have a trough over there for the calf, for the for the for silage for the calves. We will fill that as well. There's a wheelbarrow over there. We'll just fill that with silage. But first, before I do that, before I feed them, I want to clean out their little calf creep there. This is where we put uh, their silage, and uh, we just fill the barrel here and throw the silage into that. But as you can see, um, their creep is a bit. The creep is a bit dirty, so I'll uh, I'll get the one three five in the box, back it in. Uh, we'll clean the creep out, and um, we'll then give them silage, so their silage isn't being scattered on the dirty ground. Because sometimes they do scatter it, as you can see. Um, so uh, we'll give that a scrape out first, clean it, and load it into the box, and then um, we'll give them silage.
Well, that's uh, them cleaned out and fed, so they're happy out, hopefully. So uh, we have a bale put in, we have them fed, we have the calves cleaned out, and we have them silage. The only thing to do is fill this with water and the blue barrel over there with water, but I'll do that off camera because it's nothing, it's nothing really spectacular. But uh, we have a few more jobs to do. These next ones um, really aren't really day-to-day -day jobs, daily jobs, like, like this, the feeding the cattle and all that. This was a day-to-day -day job, daily jobs. But the next jobs are either done um, every, every two weeks, every week or every month or sometimes um, every year. There's just a couple of jobs that I have to do that I just decided to throw into this video because I... All right, that's more or less emptied. You might have seen that the the grape got caught because uh, that is something the actual floor. The actual floor is actually quite rotten and there's holes in it and it's rotten away. This is actually just an old door off a shed that we just placed down on uh, onto the into the box to use it as a floor until we got the box fixed. Uh, so you can see the, the, the hinge for the door is there well the, the sort of lock and then you have a, the hinge of a door there and you have another one there and when I was graping that old prong got caught within it, the hinge so uh, that's uh, why the grape was getting caught and stuck there if you were wondering but uh, the box is emptied and uh, we'll plough back to the farmyard now and get the next job done now the barrel of ashes needs to go I didn't record me um, putting on the barrel of ashes because it's quite quite full and it's windy today but that is that is full to the neck um, I put our house ashes into it and um, some of it over spilled over the edges and that's how full it is so we'll go and empty that down the bog get rid of that and we'll tidy up the ashes that's here scrape it up uh, I have a shovel got I don't know where I left it though but anyways first we'll go and empty these ashes when I come back with the empty barrel of ashes, I clean up that and shove, um, scoop, shovel any of those ashes that overflew out of the, um, the top of the barrel there, put it into the empty barrel. I have to empty those ashes into it and then we have some other farmyard sort of maintenance jobs that we really need to get uh, a grips of. So I guess while I'm already here and I have the shovel beside me, I might as well just scrape all these ashes out and have it ready for when I come back. Um, with the empty barrel of ashes. So uh, I'm going to put the camera down and we'll get into it.
And as I got that done, there's obviously bits of straw and stuff because we uh, store our straw there. We need to get more, but we've only two cows to calf in uh, in April, which should be in a couple of weeks' time, two or three weeks' time. But um, yeah, the, obviously it looks way cleaner now, but there was a load of straw and other sort of crap there that the, um, the, uh, the ashes fell on. And you can't really separate ashes from whatever it falls on. But uh, it doesn't matter if there's ashes and leaves and straw mixed in with it. Because I'm, we're only dumping it down the bog or wherever in the wood just to get it out of the way. So um, it's all going to decompose eventually. So uh, it's no harm if uh, a bit of stuff gets mixed up with the ashes. So now we're going into this. You may have seen that I put a pallet fork on the, um, the bale splitter. And uh, someone actually said in one of my videos, I think it was uh, w one of the videos of me moving the bushes, that uh, they said that the bale handler is a very multi-purpose tool because it can split a bale and feed the cattle. It moves branches and if you stick a, an old pallet on the forks, you can use it as a, a transportation feature then. Usually we'd use the box on the 135 but that has dung in it and it's not full yet so it's not really worth my time emptying it going over the road. And um, and emptying it, so uh, we had the pallet fork on the international for fencing a couple of weeks ago. We put all like chainsaws and our fencing equipment on that, and it done the job. So uh, that's what I done today, because uh, there's no, it's not worth my while emptying that into emptying the box. It's just not, it's not even that full yet. So uh, I decided to put the pallet fork on the bale spritter, and then wrestle this barrel of ashes onto the to the bale. Um, onto the pallet then because um, it's quite full anyways uh, let's go and empty it let's hope it doesn't fall but um, I have it tilted that the the ashes barrel is level and um, I'll just take it easy going down the field and uh, when I'm going in the bog I'll probably drop down a gear but hopefully fingers crossed uh, it doesn't fall off because it'll make a big mess Well, I got it back to the farm anyways, and thanks be to God, I got it up the field without it falling off um, into the actual field itself and making a right mess. But yeah, I'm covered or more or less covered in ashes, but um, we'll um, clean that pile up there and throw it into the barrel here. And then we'll put the ashes that's in here into this barrel and that should do it another two or three weeks, hopefully.
Well, thank that's uh, that job is done because it's um, it's not a, a job I look forward to doing. There's a lot of dust, uh, a lot of choking as well. So um, it's not a job I I I like doing, but it has to be done, and that's farming for you. So um, so um, I think the next thing to do is we'll quickly take off the pallets of the bale splitter and we'll park up the international and we'll go and do our next uh, job at hand. Okay, the next job is to clean the rust off um, these. You can see that there's rust on the lock there and it's a pain. It's a right pain in the hole when you're trying to either lock it or unlock it because the rust keeps then sticking and then this bit tends to not uh, move out as freely as it should. And it's the same as this lock as well. So these two locks are for the shed of this workshop and for the shed, I mean not the shed, but for the gate. Um, of the front um, farmyard so um, if they're not easy open now because of the rush so um, what we do is get a bit of sandpaper this is the sandpaper I used for the alloy jobs so if you haven't watched any of my alloy videos there's two of them on the <coughs> sorry the ashes now I was, uh, was making a, a right job on my, my throat so uh, just excuse me for a minute if you haven't watched any of my alloy videos there's two of them on the channel um, you'll understand what we had sandpaper for alloys for. I'm not going to explain it in this video because it, it, we're just going to go off track. But anyways, we have a, a bit of 60 grit or 80 grit sandpaper in there somewhere. We'll use the rough one to sand all the, the rough sort of rushed off the lockdown. And then uh, give a go over with them with uh, a finer grit sandpaper. And then to finish it off, we have GT85, which is the equivalent to WD-40 except... That's empty. So um, this is basically the same. It's probably cheaper. I don't know how much it is, but uh, we don't have any WD-40 left, so we have to use the equivalent, the GT85. Which sounds like a car, but uh, anyways, yeah. Anyways, hopefully I can do a good job at these and uh, I'll get started. <laughs> As you can see, it's better. I got all the rushed off it. Um, there's obviously it's obviously has a bit of wear and tear. What you're seeing there is not really rushed. It's just wear and tear from constantly opening it and locking it, and from from weather. But uh, it moves more freely. Um, uh, this one, and as you can see, there's a small bit of rushed on it. I don't think it's as bad as that one because that one had a lot of rushed on it, but. Uh, you can kind of open this one if you turn this where the rush isn't going to affect it and then it'll sort of slide out. But uh, if you turn this to where the rush is going to grip on something, it's not going to move out for you and you're not going to have an enjoyable time trying to open it. But uh, yeah, so what I did was I got a bit of this 80 grit sandpaper and went over uh, the lock and scrubbed it, all the, scrubbed it down with 80, sprayed a couple of that on it. And then I went over with uh, a 220 grit and uh, that just gave it a more smoother, <clears throat> shinier finish. So uh, that lock is done. This one is next. That's the uh, the rushy, rushy bit there that if you turn it at uh, the wrong angle in this, it grips either something in here or something in here. Uh, it's something in here anyways because this is just an open thing. But uh, it gets caught in either in here or in here, the, the rusty bit on this, and it's just a pain to get it out. 
luckily whoever locked the gate last night it was probably the old man I was probably running up turf or something but uh, <clears throat> that uh, was more easier to get out than I thought but I'd still give it a clean since I give that one a clean I might as well give this one a clean and then they'd all be done on the same day so uh, I'll put the camera down again and I'll get on with it As you can see, just like on this one, that was the rushed, and there was rushed on this as well. But because of the constant use and weather this had, and every year cleaning it down, sanding it down, um, it's obviously just taken the, the actual shine out of it. So um, that's actually not rust, it's just we had this lock a very long time, and um, constantly sanding down the rust on it, it just took the natural shine of the, the lock itself so um that one is good i know it might look still rusty on camera but that one is still good and um i you know you don't have like feel a vision or whatever but uh when you rubbed your finger on that rusty bit on this you could actually feel the rust and how rough it was but now after doing a bit of sanding down on it it's um it's way more smoother it needs a bit more work but uh i'll get on to that but uh, so far it's going better and um, it wasn't as bad as this one so it was only that old knacker of a one there so uh, yeah. Well, that's them done. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you might be looking at this one and be like, Jesus, there's a lot of rush still left on this one. But uh, this lock is older than this lock. And it's probably in a worse place. So it's been hit by weather more um, than this one. But this one has been... We've, what have you seen this uh, on this video? Me sanding it down and spraying it and taking off all the rush. We probably have done this for like... I don't know. You can even see the chips and stuff in this lock compared to this one because this one is fairly new. But um, yeah, this um, has seen a lot of sun, a lot of sun, a lot of moons. So um, it's quite old, and uh, it's just the sh the sh the sheet that's over these locks, that nice shiny look to them. That's just worn away from weather and from cleaning the rust off them. So that's why this lock here might look like it's. There's still a lot of rush on it, but um, it's not. Anyways, that is going to be the end of today's video. It wasn't really farm maintenance, even though the farm does need a bit of maintenance, and that probably sh will be recorded as well at some point. But uh, I don't know what I call this video. I said at the start it was farm maintenance, but it wasn't really. But um, there, there was two jobs that had to be done, and I done them. So I don't have to worry about them now for a while. But... Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please do give me a like. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe and turn on the bell notification then so you'll be notified of every um, future video. And I'll see you in my next video very soon. Take care.